Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Gooey's Dungeon Dive, the podcast where I, Gooey, rank all of the dungeons in The Legend of Zelda. And as we continue our journey through Oracle of Ages, the Maku Tree directs us to the location of the next essence of time, which rests inside the Western Woods. In this twisted, messed up, Lost Woods style maze, we have to play a game with some forest fairies to be able to properly navigate the area. After doing so, we can finally reach the dungeon, though because it's old and cracked, as we approach it, it crumbles into rubble. We receive a tip from the Maku Tree to check out Nehru's home, where we find the Harp of Ages. The Spirit of Nehru teaches us the Tune of Echoes, which allows us to activate time portals to travel to the past, hopefully to enter the dungeon before it was ancient and crumbling. In the past, the western woods is filled with many soldiers and even civilians searching for mystery seeds by the request of Queen Ambi. By obtaining some, we get a military escort to Ambi's palace where she offers us some bombs as a reward for finding the mystery seeds. After Link is escorted from the palace, we discover the mystery seeds are somehow needed by Varen for her plot involving the construction of the Black Tower. With bombs in hand, we can return to the woods and blow open a wall into the next dungeon. I guess maybe uh, causing the crackage, hmm. <laughs> but anyway, this brings us to the Wing Dungeon. And I guess with the name, we have a theme. For starters, the dungeon layout takes the shape of a bird. There's a pretty fun mini boss called Swoop that is a sort of bird thing. <laughs> And the dungeon item is, of course, the Rock's Feather. I don't know if Wing Dungeon is a great name. I don't know if that's got a good ring to it, but sure. One other prominent theme for this dungeon, in my opinion, is the use of color. In fact, you could have called this the Color Dungeon and gotten away with it. There are more elaborate color block-pushing puzzles, like the one we saw in the first dungeon. There's color statue-based puzzles. And now, with the use of Rock's Feather, there's color block changing puzzles. These techniques also get applied to the minecarts, as some have these color based barricades that will block their path. And it's cool to see the minecarts reintroduced in, in Ages. It's slightly more advanced than their first use in Seasons in terms of the first dungeon in both, but uh, it makes sense. This is a bit more puzzle based. While being puzzle heavy, this dungeon has some nice navigation too. Definitely nicer than Spirit's Grave. It's appropriate for a second dungeon. Still some little bits of non-linearity with the key collection and usage. A few branching paths, some non-linearity and backtracking mixed in. It's a, it's a nice little uh, recipe, you know, you throw in the non-required items and it spices things up. Uh, it's the classic 2D based techniques at play, almost a, almost a formula they're working with here. The bombs gifted to us by Queen Ambi also get some play here. There are some bombable walls that aren't too tough to spot, but it really all comes together with the final boss, Head Thwomp. Along with the bombs, this Mario look-alike also incorporates color and rock's feather. It's pretty neat to see all the elements come together. This guy spins around his different color faces and spits out fireballs as an attack. And by jumping on these floating platforms and hucking bombs into his face while it's showing red, it does damage to him. It can be a little tricky, maybe frustrating to some, but I don't know why this time around I had kind of a good time with it. So, Head Thwomp, he's okay to me. And of course, his defeat gets us the pickup of the next essence of time, the ancient wood. It whispers only truth to closed ears from out of stillness. And there we go. Um, again, quick explanation. Uh, doesn't mean I think less of it than others. Um, it's just we've gotten to the point where I don't have to re-explain some of these uh, navigational concepts of uh, you know where you use the key and stuff. I know I went into heavy detail on some of those in like Link's Awakening, but um, at this point, you can take my word for it, <laughs> or you could go look go look at a map of the dungeon. You can see, um, yeah, it's it's got some uh, it's good it's good in, uh, second dungeon navigation. Uh, overall, a really solid dungeon. I d I would definitely put it above Spirit's Grave. Um, yeah. 
so a good a good number two good follow-up to number one um almost i think actually a lot better than number one uh not that not that number one was that bad but um i guess yeah the question is where's it gonna go um if okay pull it up to the main list because i want to i'm gonna think about it this way real quick um let's go to snakes remains that's that was number two in seasons um and i think it's a lot more fun than that uh i think the navigation's a little bit more interesting um you know it's not super complicated uh as a puzzle but i think you know mixing the the mine carts and the color and the jumping color puzzles is pretty fun standout so right away i i'm willing to go above that but the question is where does it land maybe maybe poison moss layer is a, is another good um measuring stick what do we think would would it go above or below poison moth slayer it's getting really tricky to slip some of these in you know i poison moss slayer was fairly fun um but uh and i did like kind of the you know it was fairly linear i guess but i i, I kind of liked the way it was laid out and stuff like that um but i i would put it above that I would definitely put it above that now. I, I think this just had, like, the way the uh, elements all work together here, um, the puzzles are a lot more fun. Um, I like the mini boss here a lot. The Poison Moth had a good mini boss, too. Um, yeah. We can go above Poison Moth Slayer. Okay, this is good, because we're, now we're in a range of a bunch of 2D dungeons and stuff like that so it's like where where can it land we're, we are at the point where we've got kind of a nice solid formula worked out and even though this one's not well I would say it's done a fair amount it's got the little color enemies and stuff those guys are pretty fun a lot more I think it's a lot more interesting actually than the uh, color dungeon in Link's Awakening, which we're way above, but <laughs> if I'm looking at the next season's one, I don't think I would put it above Unicorn's Cave. That's a very solid dungeon. Um, much more going on there. I think I think better navigation with the minecarts, even though it's not super complicated. I just like the the layout of them. There is a lot more fun, and um, yeah, I would say it has slightly better navigation so i i'll put it below that but how much below honestly face shrine isn't a fun one looking back on it it's not it's not too incredibly fun um these link to the past ones i have here are ones that i think are really cool conceptually but maybe flawed in execution um, I don't know, actually, I think this is where I'm going for now. Call me crazy, because this is a big shoot-up compared to, uh, the season's ones, but just generally found this very pleasurable. Um, I think I'm gonna go above Face Shrine and below Unicorn's Cave. Um, yeah, because I think, yeah, I think it's a, just a really solid number two. Um, and yeah, it makes sense. It comes after the first dungeon in Link's Awakening, which I liked a lot. Um, definitely better than the second dungeon in Link's Awakening, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was just playing it, and I was like, this is a, this is a good one. Um, you know, a lot of cool co concepts that kind of mix together well. Um, music's not bad in that one. I didn't really mention it. It is in the 25 spot, which could mean good stuff for the rest of the game because you know like seasons it took a few to hit its stride and then once it did it was crushing it um i don't know if that's i don't know i don't know what happens here um with these dungeons i guess we'll see we'll see if it can uh 
maintain or if it'll drop off or or what but um we had a weaker start but then once the ball got rolling we're we're kicking so let's see let's see it feels maybe a bit uneven so far but uh yeah i guess we will find out next week as we make our way to tokay island <laughs>